All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, my name is Chris Wolonski. I'm the Director of Programs and Partnerships with Peace Through Action USA. Um, if you're not familiar with our work, um, we are an organization that activates and equips Americans to implement practical, peaceful solutions to aggression and violence in their communities and across our country. Um, we are eager to work with everyday individuals, which brings us to um, our Featured Peace Builders Initiative. Um, and so this interview is, is leading into that Featured Peace Builders Initiative, um, which is an expression of our belief that all of us can be peace builders. Um, you don't have to be Gandhi or Martin Luther King to bring about change in your community. Um, so in this spirit, we're trying to uplift the voices of people, just ordinary people doing extraordinary things to increase peace and decrease violence. Um, and so today we have uh, Julie Malosi, who is a documentary filmmaker and her work explores the transformative power of traditional cultural practices in the contemporary world. Um, thank you for joining us today, Julie. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, can you maybe just tell us a little bit about your work and how you grew into um, making films about that focus on you know, peace and violence? And um, I know that's a only a, a branch of the larger portfolio of your work. Um, but yeah, if you could speak to that a little bit, we would love to hear. Sure, thanks. Um, yeah, so I mean, I've always loved uh, writing and storytelling and meeting all kinds of people and learning from them in the world. Um, and I ended up majoring in film at college um, and documentary film specifically. So I set off um, and I think, uh, I sort of found my focus in this idea of traditional cultural practices uh, in the contemporary world, because I think I'm just really interested in different, um, the way, you know, we all have different cultural roots. I'm from a mixed background myself, I'm part Chinese, part Italian, American, and um, and I think I'm very interested in how, you know, cultures mixed together, there's cultural borrowings and lendings that are hopefully respectfully, you know, respectfully applied. And I believe that a lot of these traditional practices have real power in to help us address some of the social issues and personal issues we're facing. So um, I guess that became a kind of focus and, and I have a real social justice commitment. I work a lot in my community around social justice issues and climate change issues and, and I'm a teacher as well. And so I, I guess I just, um, you know, found that through filmmaking is a way that I can, uh, try to advance things that I believe in through storytelling, partly of other people doing great work to amplify their voices and provide models for other communities and individuals. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, what are some of the traditional cultural practices that you really took an interest in? Um, yeah, well, the first time this kind of clicked in my mind was a film I made called Monkey Dance. Um, it came out in, I think, around 2004. Um, and this was a film I spent several years, about four years, following three Cambodian-American teenagers coming of age in Lowell, Massachusetts, which uh, has a very large Cambodian community. It's it's actually the third largest Cambodian city in the world after oh, yeah. um, Phnom Penh and Long Beach, California. So it's a very yeah. large immigrant uh, refugee community and the second, third generations now. Um, and these the kids I followed were part of a traditional Cambodian dance troupe. That as I first read a clipping in the newspaper that the Lowell Police Department was teaming up with Big Brother, Big Sister, and this traditional Cambodian dance troupe to try to help kids stay out of gangs and off of drugs by doing traditional Cambodian dance. And I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting, you know, yeah, and yeah. and that they mixed the dance with hip hop too. That they're you know the kids growing up in a really multicultural city in America, and they're you know they're of this time and of this place and. Um, I was very intrigued by that kind of story gets me right like uh, oh mixing you know uh, ancient um, you know classical uh, uh, Cambodian traditions with hip hop and and break dancing and stuff so um, so I filmed these three teenagers as they came of age and um, really all of their not all of them but many of their older brothers and sisters and friends had had fallen into traps um, partly because it's an impoverished neighborhood and their parents were you know had survived a genocide and were coming with 
trauma and uh, lack of job skills and language skills and, you know, landing in this uh, urban environment with their children who are growing up here. And um, so most of these teenagers, their older siblings had either been in gangs or had been involved with drugs. You know, one of them, the older sister had murdered her abusive partner and was in jail for 18 years. And, you know, they had really, you know, we're being surrounded by choices that are not healthy, but, you know, kind of hard to find a way out of. And then this dance troupe was a very strong sense of community, instilling, helping them understand their parents' culture and the beauty of that culture and a way to connect to that something inside and something with their parents. And so I filmed them for several years as they kind of came of age. And I traveled with the dance troupe all over filming them and um, end up making a story about, you know, this idea of, it was about, it was a portrait of these three kids. And then of the idea of this, this culture helping, you know, it was keeping peace in that way, you know, in, in the sense of like yeah. helping people become successful young adults in America by connecting with this faraway uh, cultural element. And they're all, I have, I'm happy to say all three of them, they're now in their thirties and they all have kids of their own and they are a high school teacher. They are running a major program at a community health center and they are a youth worker. Like they're all really contributing to their community still. Oh, that's um, amazing. So. Yeah. That's fascinating how that kind of, cultural hybridity is like operating as a bridge you know in a way I love that that's <laughs> such a beautiful project Thank you. Um, and then so this month we are going to be uh screening a film that you made um with our community uh called Circle Up and it's a so give it a a uh, simple elevator pitch is it's a film that uh, kind of explores re restorative justice, which is um, rooted in a traditional cultural practice as well, which has, um, if I'm not mistaken, kind of um, indigenous roots um, in kind of the native heritage of America. Can you talk a little bit about Circle Up and, and how um, that project came into being? Sure. Um, yeah. And again, this one started with a newspaper article, although so this time someone gave it to me. This happens a couple of times a year. Somebody says, oh, you need to make a film about this, like two or three times a year. <laughs> and usually I kind of discount it because it, it you know, there's uh, ideas are a dime a dozen, but it's actually really takes a lot of time and energy and money to make a film and to fundraise for it and find distribution. So I don't like take on a new project lightly. It takes me like five years to make a film. So I have right. to feel something inside, you know, um, but a colleague of mine handed me this article of, about um, a community north north of near Boston, part of Boston, essentially, that is, um, you know, had a lot of street violence and um, young young people falling into paths that weren't so successful for them. And that was using indigenous peacemaking circles. I had never heard that term at the time. This was like, you know, many years ago, um, using peacemaking circles to help the, the community come together um, and find their way. So I went, this is not what the film ended up being about, but this introduced me to the notion of the indigenous peacemaking circle which is a, a a tradition in many indigenous American cultures, but also it's a kind of basic human tradition found in many old cultures, you know, uh, African tribal cultures, Celtic culture in Ireland, you know, whatever, several, it's not unique to North America necessarily. But um, so I started, I was very interested in this idea, same as, you know, the same idea of like a, a traditional cultural practice that's helping people in the modern world, again, hopefully respectfully applied and not just appropriatively or exploitatively uh, stolen from another culture out of context, but learning from elders. And um, and so I started researching. I I went there first and there wasn't, wasn't quite possible to tell that story, but I started traveling actually all over the United States to find a story around restorative justice or peacemaking circles that could be, um, could be told on film. And I, I ended up circling back to right here in Boston, where I live, Boston area. And um, I first met um, this community leader named Janet Connors, who uh, people call her Mama J. Um, okay. And she um, she's a person who's had like an amazing life story. She grew up, you know, Irish American working class um, as a single mom and um, ended up that one of her, her son, one of her three children, her son was murdered, unfortunately, in 2001. And she just had this gut feeling that she did not want to just, uh, you know, throw away the lock the perpetrators up and or the people responsible up and throw away the key but she wanted something to come up that didn't address her needs at all as a victim you know yeah. to, to just ruin more lives she felt like that doesn't get us anywhere as a society and um so she reached out to the men responsible for her son's murder and um ended up you know having peacemaking circles with the having a process with them 
after lots of coaching, you know, there was a lot going up to it. It was a, called a victim offender dialogue. It, it was a process that was officially legally set up in Massachusetts um, to, to have this dialogue with a mediator and all kinds of stuff. And, and that led after a process in which, you know, two of the four men responsible, you know, came and stood on her son's grave and apologized to her and uh, committed not just to, not just saying they're sorry and I forgive you kind of thing, but really committed to hold themselves accountable by um, helping the community, help to prevent more violence, to come speak on behalf of, you know, two young people to help them see, you know, the consequences of certain decisions. And um, so anyway, I um, I was able to, I started out telling Janet's story and uh, and not only that backstory, but her current work, because after doing that process, she became, a, she was already a leader in her community, but she became a person who, was, was a facilitator of a circle keeper. She was a facilitator of circles, helping young people um, and just all, also returning citizens from prison, just different types of community members uh, holding circle and holding space for that. And so I was documenting her current work and this backstory. And then in the process, I met her, her friend, Clarissa Turner, who is another mother and, um, who is also a leader in her community. And she's African-American and her son was what uh, Marquise was murdered as well. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's like a terrible, it's like they said, it's like a club you never wanted to join, you know, um, mm -hmm. but a club of, um, so Clarissa founded a group called Legacy Lives On of um, families of people, uh, families of victims of homicide who come together to support each other. And it's run in a circle format as well. And um, so, uh, and she, you know, Janet kind of was her mentor in a way, um, and because her son died later, you know, it was after Janet had kind of gone through an evolution and it was a huge help to Clarissa. And she's now an amazing community leader too, an amazing speaker. And um, so the two of them work individually and also together working with young people and going and speaking. And um, so the film, back to the film, sorry, this is taking so long, but no, um, the film really um, is tells the story of these two women and this group of mostly mothers in Boston who are trying to kind of turn things around by, not thinking about things as such a binary like victim perpetrator or you know good and evil or you know whatever but really looking at the whole person on both on all sides and the and the needs of the community the needs of the victims the needs of the people responsible um uh yeah, yeah. so it's it's um and but it all came out of my interest in these traditional practices in the end the peacemaking circle itself is not the center of the film but um it, it was a kind of spark that got me interested in it right that's fascinating i love I love how this kind of general interest in in traditional cultural practices is like giving rise to <laughs> your ability to tell these fascinating human stories. Um, in I guess you know, kind of extending that observation is, what role do you feel, you know, as a storyteller? How do you how do you tell that story? Because it sounds like such a delicate experience for kind of all parties involved you know how do you feel how do you resolve you know what you give voice to maybe what you edit out you know I know a lot of filmmaking is actually editing um so I'm kind of curious you know what were some of those decision making processes for you as a as a storyteller and filmmaker what what were some of those salient themes that you wanted to highlight and what you know what things did you in some ways need to uh for lack of better words, what darlings did you need to kill? Yeah, right? well, that, I mean, that's a really great question because I definitely learned a lot and I've in this project and one other project that I've worked on about working with people who have tra have experienced trauma and it was, and, and to try to figure out, is there a way that filmmaking can be restorative in itself? Yeah. And I, I just was very sensitive to not wanting to cause more trauma, trauma by the retelling of the story, the constant playing of it in public and all of that stuff. So I definitely, you know, learned a lot about that and, Kind of collaborating and sharing the rough cuts and and getting feedback from the people in the film and um so uh, a couple of just this is just like anecdotes anecdotes that kind of tell something about this process so one of the factors that i never considered as a storyteller was um but that's very important to janet was like how many times was the film going to show her hugging the man responsible one of the men responsible for murdering her son like she's a hugger she's a you know a person who just like embraces people and um, I filmed, you know, every time I filmed these two people together, she gave him a big hug, but um, she and her daughter were kind of sensitive to how many times are we going to show that in the film? And I hadn't even thought about that, you know, but because on film emotion is great, right? 
but their point was that, you know, this is not just about like Janet is some angel who's got a big heart and is like forgiving. Oh, isn't this wonderful? But it's, you got to balance that with accountability. It's a balance between forgiveness and kind of accountability. So, oh, yeah. uh, you know, so anyway, there was that issue. And then there was another interesting question that came up around the balancing of these stories of two families, one white and one black. And it just so happened in my filmmaking that um, I met Janet first and had been filming her for already a year. And I had a lot more material like footage uh, of right. her family than of African American family. And, you know, this, um, we had a rough cut screening and I think that the balance was off and somebody mm -hmm. pointed out that, you know, we just need to be really careful that you are not taking white people's pain more serious than black people's pain. Mm -hmm. And that was just really instructive and helpful. And I realized, you know, I, I saw how it came about and maybe it's something internal to me as well, you know, my own internalized racism or internalized, um, you know, bias towards stories I'm more familiar with or whatever. Um, yeah. But it was pretty easy to remedy just looking at the material I had and mm -hmm. to tweak things a little to make sure that there was a little more um, balance and it, it really strengthened the film too. So wow. um, anyway, I just learned a lot and I feel that a big part of my work is also just to launch another little topic as getting the films out there because making the films is one thing, but for them to have impact, it's like another little project, a big project actually to Ooh, get it out there. Yeah, what does that process look like for you? The process of kind um, of spreading, you know, uh, distributing yeah. the film, showing it. Yeah, it's I mean, it looks different for different projects. Sometimes I make short films on commission for nonprofit organizations and then they they have a whole network and they get it out. So that I did that for about 20 years, making over a hundred short pieces that had a specific purpose. So that's easy for me as a filmmaker because I'm paid and then they do the distribution. I see. Um, the, but for my own films that are more like personal projects, I have to fundraise and distribute. And um, so with Circle Up, I joined a, a really great co-op. It's a cooperative of social justice filmmakers called New Day Films. Oh, interesting. And we distribute, it's a distribution co-op. So we are all people who make our own films and want to make sure that they get out in the world in the way we want, not just, you know, on the digital shelf of some distributor who is not going to uh, promote it to, you know, no, no distributor is going to promote it to like programs in prisons, for example. You know, I love my film showing in prisons. It shows in prisons all the time, but that's not like a big market to make money off of, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. but New Day has allowed me to, you know, do very kind of customized outreach to different organizations. Um, and, you know, we wrote a facilitator guide. I worked with somebody else to write a facilitator guide that has like examples of circle, like circle prompts that like, if you don't know much about how to keep circle, how could you show the film and then have a, this talking circle about the film? and kind of wow. customize it to your own. Um, in fact, your, maybe your organization can even use, um, use that as a template. Yes, thank you for that. I'm excited to explore that resource. I think that's something we could not only use for this screening and discussion, but you know, in, in our future programs, I'm really eager um, to, to apply that to our work. Um, yeah, so that's, that's amazing. Um, you know, I think, one of those, one of the main things for me, just as personally listening, is just this fascination with traditional cultures, and and I've I've recently had a, a major interest in that as well. Just reading some of um, the work of the anthropologist Wade Davis. I'm not sure if you're familiar with his work, but he wrote this book, The Wayfinders, that talks all about how you know indigenous wisdom can inform our modern kind of predicament that we're in, you know, um, and, and how maybe innovation is actually the process of, of applying some of this wisdom from the past into our present um, moment. So I think this is a perfect, perfect film for us as an organization to show and we are really eager to explore restorative justice. That's something we've been kind of trying to work with in school programs. Um, and, and, you know, we've had some visions of how it could be applied to our work with some of the, the projects we have on the horizon for this coming year. So um, I really do hope that, you know, in the future, it might be possible to just send you an email or keep you posted on, on how, you know, this restorative justice process is, is working for us um, so yeah definitely thank you yeah i'd love to i love hearing back you know it kind of feeds feeds you to feeds me as a filmmaker knowing that because you know sometimes it's a lonely long slog to make these things and it's just so wonderful to get um 
get kind of feedback from the field of people being able to make use of the film. Yeah, yeah, we are so eager to show this film and 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 thank you for sharing, you know, your your journey as a storyteller, as a filmmaker and and just, you know, just someone with an interest, you know, because I know that you have this whole other range of filmmaking and and I think that's also something I want to encourage with this featured peace builder initiative is that you know you don't need to you know commit your whole life to working for the UN and moving you know to Uganda or something like you can you know still have this branch of your portfolio of of work in the world that that is social justice oriented but you you know you can still find these little corners and pockets in almost any um field really yeah. so i think that's absolutely yeah you know that's that's funny that reminds me a little bit of a, a quote somebody said to me recently about um art from an art perspective to make your whole life your art mm. so that that it's not just about like your films or your sculpture or your work of art but actually just the way you live your life and and the way you relate to people in your house and your you know all the little parts of you can become part of and i think you could say the same thing about peace right like peace Definitely. peace building that um it can be in everything so small as like your interactions with your your neighbor about where to put the trash cans or whatever you know like uh, that <laughs> right. kind of stuff i love that yeah it's like a wider like orientation towards life i guess yeah well don't want to take up too much of your time um so i just want to thank you so much for joining us for this interview and and sharing this film with us sharing your insight into this film with us and we are so eager to to share your work with with our community at our next event. So thank you so much, Julie. And you're welcome. And thanks for having me. Thanks for you know for the the great work you guys are doing too. Oh uh, yes, of course. Thank you. All right, here we are going to.